And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at something different, and that is Magic the Gathering. Now, we're not taking a look at Magic the Gathering as a whole. We're taking a look at, uh, what's this? This is a two, this is a dual deck, where basically you buy two decks, they come in this box, they're already out of here, and this one is Heroes vs. Monsters. What would you rather be? Heroes. Of course, and I'd rather be the monsters, so that worked out well. Now, if you're watching this and you're someone who likes magic a lot, you have to realize that we are not magic aficionados. We play it on a casual level, which means we buy dual decks. We buy sometimes starter decks. We buy thousands of commons and build decks and play with them, but we don't play on any kind of competitive level. What we're going to be taking a look at today is how this plays if you just buy this. Let's say you never played Magic the Gathering before, you want to buy this, or you play on a little bit of level, and you want to buy these two decks to play against each other. We've played these decks against each other a lot. We haven't played them against other decks, so this is just how does this work as a self-contained game, which I think it should be looked at. Here we go. Now the first thing we'll do is we're going to look at the hero deck. Now both decks come with a tuck box that comes tucked inside this big box. This is just for display purposes only. You don't need it after that. And so you have a tuck box for the heroes and for the monsters. So the heroes is a red white deck that's using the two different, if you've not played magic before, there's five different colors and red and white is kind of like the healing, red is destructive. Red and white aren't always combined together but in this one they're combined and so you'll have mountains which you'll tap to provide you with red resources, essentially red mana, and white ones for white. And then there's a couple extra lands in here. This one here lets you scry, which lets you look at the top card of your deck and put it on the bottom or top, so it's a good way to find the cards you need. And then you got a couple uh, land gates here that can be red or white mana. Now, because it's a red-white deck, there are some cards in the deck that are just red and white specifically, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the cards from this deck. Here's a human knight who can, you can basically use red and white to upgrade him. He starts as a 2-2, but you can make him a 4-2 and give him first strike, which lets him take out a lot of the smaller green creatures. You also have a couple stun snipers in the deck. These are really neat because you can pay a mana and tap them to do a damage to somebody and basically tap that creature. So if there's a big giant creature on the monster side, you can knock them out of the way. There's also uh, Annex and Symede here. They have First Strike and Vigilance, and when you cast a spell that targets them, everyone you have gets plus one, plus one against Trample. This is basically the leader of your deck. They're very useful. But speaking of very useful, I really enjoy this creature. He's a, he's a Wino to put out. He's a red or a white to put out. But then you can upgrade him to a 2-2, two, two, and then upgrade him to a 4-4, four, four, and then upgrade him to an 8-8 eight, eight with flying and first strike. As the monster guy, I fear this one. Because if I let him sit out there too long, he will become an unstoppable force that will really damage me. Not to mention this guy here who is a flying creature and gives all your other attacking creatures a plus two. So those are basically the, the red-white creatures, but there's also quite a few different white creatures in the thing. This guy is double strike here. We have a sentinel who, if he's blocked, he can untap. So he's great to always send on the attack. And we have lots of small little white creatures, a lot of knights with vigilance. This one here has lifelink. You even have a couple of small red heroes. One of the, th the features of this deck, of course, is that there's flying creatures that can't be blocked unless a creature has flying or reach. And so here we have the Pegasus, which is a cool one. And when they attack, all your humans get flying also. And since there's a lot of humans in the deck, very useful. And then you got a couple of these Free Wind Equinauts also in the deck. I like these giants. Not very powerful, but they're great on defense, especially if you have a gate and there's a couple of gates in the deck. The opposite of the giant is the Pit Fighter, who when you play him, he can attack right away and he can do six damage, but he's very easy to take out. The big bad boss of the whole deck is the Sun Titan. You can see he's shiny hair, a foil card, but he's a 6-6, six, six, and when you bring him out, he actually lets you bring one of your dead people back into play. You play him at the right time, and that can be the whole changing of the game. Now, this is the white creatures and red creatures in the deck, but there's a lot of enchantments. Here we can put 
a plus one, plus one counter on somebody. Give them double strike. Give them a plus two, plus two if they're human, or you can play this on your opponent where they can't attack or block. This is a great diverse card because it helps you out or it can hurt your opponent. And here you give someone a plus two, plus two, make them fly. Uh, give them plus one, plus one. So you can see that there's lots of enchantments that you can put on people to make them very powerful. And then if you get this Winds of Wrath, destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted and they can't be regenerated. You enchant a couple of your people. There's a lot of monsters coming out. You play this card. Not only have you leveled the playing field, but you put it into your favor. And so there's a lot of different instants that will give you bonuses as time goes by also. I like this one here. The target blocking creature gets plus seven, plus seven. Or prevent all damage. A source of your choice would deal this turn. That can be really critical. Or here, destroy a target creature with power four or greater. Here you can do two damage to anybody and then scry two. Look at the top two cards of your deck. So there's some really neat, cool cards in the white deck. It's all about taking small creatures, making them massive. And that normally seems to be a green thing, but the white deck, uh, white red deck here does it very effectively. In the monster deck, there's also red, but they're mixing it with green. And green is the, the deck of creatures. And we have a couple extra ones here that can not only um, add green to your, your battlefield, but they... Uh, we'll let you put plus one tokens on some of your creatures. You have a red green here that even gives you a life. And then this one here that lets you add uh, mana to your pool, but also lets you put a plus one, plus one, and give a creature trample. Which means even if they're blocked, they'll do damage to the opponent's pile. There's some cool red green effects in this one. There's this nice artifact here that I like also, the dragon blood. You put this out and you can pay three mana to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature. That's nice, uh, although not as necessary because your creatures are big and bad. This red green creature here lets you cycle through your deck, but also get a six, three. This instant here lets you destroy a target artifact or enchantment, and then does two damage to that person. Considering how many enchantments are in the red-white deck, this is one that you want. Or you can give your creatures haste. There's a giant red-green creature who, well, he's a giant shaman, and you can sacrifice him to do damage to somebody. And then this small druid, I like a lot, because you, not only can you tap her to add green to your pool, but you can, whenever you tap her for mana, you do a damage to each of your opponents. So it's basically like a land that also harms your opponents. The biggest red-green creature, though, is this Deuce of Calamity, which is a 6-6 six, six with Trample. And if it does six or more damage to an opponent, you get to destroy a target land. They have to block this creature. And it's not that difficult to get out on the board either. So a lot of fun. I like this. Now let's look at the green stuff. Here you can put a target a card from your graveyard back in your hand. They killed one of your creatures. I'm going to put it out again. This one I very much like. I didn't think much of it when I first played Prey Upon. It basically lets one of your creatures attack one of your opponent's creatures. Um, but sometimes they have a very annoying creature. Like, remember I showed you that red-white one that gets bigger and more powerful? This is the card where I take it out before it gets more big and powerful. So that's a lot of fun. Here I have, um, you can destroy a creature and in place you put a 3-3 beast on the field. So you can do it to one of your own small guys or put, you know, even destroy one of your opponent's bigger ones and turn it into a smaller 3-3. It's a really interesting concept. We also have other instants in this where you can do damage to the players. This one is very fun where you can do three damage to a target creature player. And then you can choose any number of tokens that you have and add one more to each of those. Now these are important because a lot of the creatures in this deck, or like this one, two damage to each creature, allow you to do extra things to them if you have done damage that turn. So these instants can be very useful. This Nothing super special about the Orgish Lumberjack, except I really think it's funny. The Orgish Lumberjack, he's a Lumberjack, and that's okay. But you can kill a forest and then give you three mana of red or green. <laughs> I just think that's funny. Here's a Blood Ogre, who's a 2-2 two -two with first strike, but he gets plus one, plus one, if you dealt damage this turn. So there's a lot of these guys, like here's another one, the Gorgon Minotaurs, who if you do damage, they come out and they're even more powerful. Or the Firebird here, which is extremely powerful. The Cradier Hellion is a very powerful 6-6 six, six creature you have, except you have, and it's very it's not that expensive to get out, but you have to keep keep it going. You have to keep paying for it every turn. But when it comes out, it does four damage to each other creature. Too many of those heroes on the board, boom, you play this. Although much more 
enjoyable, I think. A flying creature to block all those annoying flying things. And here, you, when you put this out, you get control of a target creature for one round. Then there's a lot of small little green creatures and some not so smalls, trolls here. This spider, which can block the flying creatures, and if it does one point of damage, will kill them. This giant tusker, which is cool, and the crowned ceratoc, and then of course the foil for this side, which is the world eater, which isn't really that powerful. It's a 5 5, but it's easy to get out. But you can make it grow monstrous. You save up a lot of mana, this thing can become the biggest creature on the board. And so that's kind of a rundown of what's in each of the decks. You like Magic the Gathering, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I like it too. So looking at these two decks, what did you think of the heroes versus monsters? Um, I really liked it. Uh, a lot of the creatures were really powerful, and some were not so powerful, but fun to put out anyway. Um, also, the lands, there are a lot of them, unlike the decks I keep seeing in my, whenever I organize my colors out. Well, maybe you just need to put more lands in. <laughs> Do you, I mean, one of the things that Melody mentioned here was the big monsters. This has a lot of big monsters. I mean, of course, you expect to often see big monsters in a green deck, and they are this big. Is that guy. But the, even the white deck has some big ones, and they both have the opportunity, both decks, to really pump up your monsters. You can make some really giant monsters. I think Melody was playing with a t monster that was doing an attack of 10 at and one also time. The figure, Destiny, where it keeps going up. But you always die them before I can even get them to the third level. Now, are the decks balanced? That's what a lot of people are going to want to think. Now, in our games, now, I almost exclusively played the monsters, and she almost always played the heroes. I think the monsters won a little bit more. I think if you're a new player, the monsters deck's a little easier, while the heroes is a little bit more difficult to pull off, although it can. It has that opportunity to just really just nail, put, make some really awesome, cool combinations. And you can spend, I can spend all this time putting out a giant monster, and she can go, gone to that monster. <laughs> Another thing I liked about the game was I liked how diverse it was. Every time we played, it seems like we get a different cool combination of monsters. There's always new stuff. Every time is something different. Because of the way magic is, you only, you know, you're often only going to play with the top 20 cards of the deck or so. <laughs> and it seemed like each time they were just really fun, different cool monsters to see how my monsters, oh, she's that annoying uh, flying creature that's attacking me. And so this deck was just a lot of fun. I don't know how it would do on a tournament level. I don't even care how it would do on a tournament level. But if you've not played Magic before, I think this is a lot. These are cool because you get to put out giant creatures and see lots of cool things. What are your final thoughts? That it was a lot of fun, and my son, the Sun Titan's my favorite character in the hero group. Because he's the biggest one. Yeah, and he has a shiny card. Now, after having <laughs> played it, would you play the monster side? Maybe. You still like the heroes better? Yeah. Did you think it was fair? All right. So, a good thumbs up from both of us. Of all the dual decks that I've gotten so far, this is my favorite one because of the diversity, because it lets you feel gigantic monsters, mm -hmm. and, well, that's basically it. So, but those are two really good reasons. I, as far as I can tell, they're fairly balanced decks. So that's Monsters vs. Heroes. Monsters! Heroes! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.